Thank you so much, and uh, I'm really honored to be standing in the floor, uh, in, in, on a stage with all these experts in the hemodynamic monitoring. So in the coming 15 or 20 minutes, I would like to share with you uh, something about the lactate. So during the preparation of this talk, I found that I have taken a lot of things for granted. We all know that lactate is the exit in the milk, okay? And we all use citrate, so citrate is the exit in the citrus fruit. But what, wait, milk is not sour, okay? So why we have lactic acid? So until then, I looked up and found that in, it's in, what, 70s, 80s, a Swedish uh, pharmaceutical chemist discovered uh, the uh, lactic acid from the sour milk, and also this gentleman also discovered the oxygen, which we use every day, and we take them for granted. So later on, and we have lactate, which is something bad, the milk becomes sour, and a German physician chemist discovered that uh, in human blood, if under pathological condition, namely in shock, these patients will develop lactic acid in their blood. And this was published uh, in 1842, so uh, more than nearly 200 years ago. So after that, we know lactate is something bad. And we have further studied, and Araki and this gentleman found that lactate is produced when oxygen supply to the muscle is interrupted in the animal model. So they stop the, to give the animal hypoxic mixtures, and then they found that uh, this animal developed lactate. And then later on, this lactate production was linked to the uh, energy requirement of the contracting muscle. And subsequently, in the 1960s, uh, Wasserman and his group established the anaerobic threshold paradigm that we have nowadays. That means if the tissue was deprived of oxygen long enough or deprived at, too deprived of oxygen, this anaerobic respiration will step in and then we develop the lactic acidosis. So this is our all understanding of lactate, and we all understand lactate is something bad. So this is uh, a picture from the uh, classical uh, biochemistry textbook. We all know that with the glucose metabolism, it will break down via the glycolysis pathway to pyruvate. And if there's oxygen supply to the mitochondria, these pyruvates will enter the mitochondria and then go into the TCA cycle and then which allow the regeneration of the NAD to allow the uh, glycolysis pathway to continue. But if unfortunately there's no oxygen going to the mitochondria, the N there will be accumulation of the Na sorry, there will be accumulation of the NADH and then we have to turn it back to NAD so to continue with the glycolysis for the minimal production of the ATP. So then lactate steps in and then we need the lactate to um, complete the uh, glycolysis cycle. And so we all know that lactate will be, per will be generated when there is um, hypoxia. So with this sort of uh, traditional thinking, it works in a lot of situations. Uh, we all know that uh, serum lactate is associated with uh, mortality with severe sepsis. And if for patients with higher lactate, more than four millimoles per liter, the mortality can range from more than 30 to more than 45 uh, percent, especially if they are associated with shock also. And this is another study done in the 2007, and they look at patients who attended a hospital and they uh, follow the, what the uh, early goal directed resuscitation and check the lactate level. So if the lactate is relatively low, the survival is good. If the lactate is more than four, the survival uh, around one month later only reached uh, 60%. So this signifies that lactate has a very useful predictive value. So we all understand that. And in the recent review by Professor uh, Vincent Lewis, um, he uh, is found that the kinetic value of uh, blood lactate, that means it's the clearance of the lactate that is uh, very predictive of the patient's outcome, and it's comment that uh, by measuring the lactate every one to two hours is sufficient in most acute condition, namely sex, sepsis, uh, post-cardiac arrest, and sort of things, and it could be useful. So, and also with this uh, clearance of lactate in mind, uh, a lot we may target our uh, resuscitation towards the clearance of lactate. 
And in this meta analysis uh, published two years ago, uh, there are four studies, and it's found that uh, targeting uh, lactate clearance uh, produce better outcome uh, compared with control. So this is how we understand lactate. And also, the importance of the lactate was included in the sepsis definition. In the sepsis definition, I mean, sepsis free definition, the septic shock is defined for someone with a, a mean pr a re hypotension a requiring inotrope to support the blood pressure, and also with a serum lactate of greater than two. So, lactate has been around us for um, very import various important aspects of uh, resuscitation. But however, in year 2004, a biochemist did a detailed accounting of the hydrogen ion in the respiratory cycle. And this is a table that uh, was included in his paper. He divided the uh, metabolism of the muscle, sorry, the energy source of the muscle into glycogen and also glucose. So after this, he started to count the number of hydrogen ions that was produced in each and every step of the glycolytic pathway. So finally, with the breakdown of one molecule of glucose down the glycolysis pathway, there will be two protons generated and also two pyruvate generated. If we break down one molecule of glycogen, only one um, molecule of hydrogen will be generated. So with the generation of this hydrogen ion and, and together with hypoxia, how the body handles the situation. We all know that the pyruvate will uh, combine with the NADH to generate the lactate in, so that the NAD can be regenerated. And very superficially, we will think that the NADH become NAD, so we have lost one proton. So this is an exit producing process. But on the other hand, this is in the reverse. By the conversion of this process, in fact, two hydrogen ion is consumed during the process in the generation of this NAD. So this, in fact, the lactate is not something evil, but something that we are trying to combat the evil by absorbing the hydrogen ion that was generated in the, glycoly in the glycolysis process. So this is another uh, illustration in that paper. They found that if we have glucose and the uh, ADP, by the cellular mechanisms of glycolysis, two pyruvate and two uh, NADH will be generated together with uh, two ATP for the body to use. But however, uh, without the, um, the mitochondrial function, this pyruvate have to be convert converted back to lactate in order to regenerate the NAD for the glycolysis pathway to, to continue. And these two hydrogen ions would be consumed, but for the uh, sake of electrical neutrality, somewhere have to generate these two hydrogen ions. And these two hydrogen ions is indeed generated from the breakdown of the ATP down to ADP. So the lactate acidosis is, is so the formation of lactate and the formation of the acidosis is indeed two separate parts. So lactate might not be something that is so terrible, and indeed it is helping us. So this is um, an, uh, what, um, more detailed analysis of how the body or how the muscle cope with the uh, metabolic demand when the oxygen supply is inadequate. In, let's say if the oxygen supply uh, was reaching 60% uh, of the maximum required, you can see that the ADP and the hydrogen ion, the mitochondria is still functioning. So all this exit is absorbed into the mitochondria and then it can uh, keep on going, the cells can function and there's no accumulation of the lactate. But however, if the oxygen uh, consumption exceeds the oxygen supply, what would happen is that the cell work will produce this uh, hydrogen ion and also phosphate, which will diffuse out of the cells or, or, or into the body, causing all the problem. And at the same time, there will be lactate accumulation. The whole process is much more complicated than what we think. So I take an analogy. So with the hypoperfusion and hypoxia, people become unhappy, the cells become unhappy, and they, they will be riot, okay? It would happen. And for the lactate, they are poor servants of the citizen. They will try to um, uh, protect everyone and settle the unhappiness of the cells. So this is an analogy. So whenever we saw the policeman, uh, something wrong must be happening, but they are not the root cause of the problem. 
So apart from that, in the physiologically, sometimes we need to produce lactate okay, to help the body to compensate. So I take two examples. One is the, uh, what the cell-to-cell -cell lactate shuttle to uh, support the metabolism of the brain and the heart, and another is the uh, cause of uh, hyperlactatemia whenever we have the excessive epine or adrenergic stimulation. So let's, let me begin with this um, uh, experiment or review paper. It, the title say that lactate fuels the human brain during exercise. What they do is simple. They ask the volunteer at rest and then ask them to do an exhaustive exercise so that they run like hell until they, they cannot go on. Of course, you can see that the lactate rest level will rise a lot and up to 15, which is really high. But if you check the glucose level at the same time, in the, these subjects, the glucose level do not change. Okay. So let's think about the brain. So the brain is not exercising, but the brain needs its uh, energy. So for the brain to absorb, sorry, how should I put it? For the brain to get its energy, there are two methods. One is to absorb the glucose, but however, as the glucose concentration is not rising, so the influx of glucose is difficult for the brain to get an extra influx of the glucose. So the brain is smart. So it starts to utilize the lactate because the lactate level is high. So anyway, I open the door and the, all the lactate will come in and then I can metabolize them. So this is one way the cell is exchanging or helping each other in coping with the stress. So this is why sometimes in a septic patient who is recovering, we see that the, sept, the, uh, the lactate level might be persistently high, yet the patient is still doing well, or, or as soon as it's doing well, it's still improving. So this is another um, uh, example about the, um, let me see, ah, I think I missed one slide. So for the second thing is about the adrenergic response, okay. So if, um, if a cell receives a beta-2 receptor stimulation, the cyclic AMP will stimulate the uh, sodium potassium ATPase to start working. And with this sodium potassium ATPA start working, this in the cytosol, the, there will be a lot of consumption of the ATP, transferring it back to ATP. And sorry, ATP. So with this process, if it is very excessive, the pyruvate uh, uh, generated might be too much, so that lactate might get accumulated in the cell. So in other words, I think we all know that with the use of adrenaline in our patients, we may see persistent lactatemia. And this is the reason behind. So this is an animal study that use a skeletal muscle, and they do two things. First, they add epinephrine onto this skeletal muscle. Of course, you can see that the lactate production will start to increase. So what they did is they tried to use a beta blocker. So they just block it. And with the addition of the adrenergic blockade, you can see that the lactate production drops. So it is somehow related to that. And also, the effect of the a reduction in the lactate production can be blocked by the use of a uh, warping. So with the warping, even with the adrenaline, the production of uh, lactate also drops. So the mechanism mediating this might not be a cellular uh, insufficient of oxygen and so on. It might be the, 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 uh, some other biochemical bio mechanisms inside the cells. So this is an, an other analogy. Sometimes we will see a lot of uh, policemen around, but they are not catching thieves or stopping a riot, but they are doing a parade or a demonstration okay, to the public to enjoy. So, so lactates might not be bad. So with this in mind, uh, Belomo and his group uh, proposed us, I think five, six years ago, that lactate clearance as a target of therapy in sepsis might be a flawed paradigm. Although in many studies we see that it's working, but it may not represent the whole truth. So uh, recently, a very interesting study was published, and this is a, a proof of concept study. What they did is that they recruited, I think, 90 patients who fulfilled the sepsis free septic shock criteria with the raised lactate. And from these patients, they also checked the hypoperfusion in context. That means, apart from the lactate, is there any other sign? that there is hypoperfusion, namely a low uh, SCVO2, a high CO2 gap, and also a prolonged capillary refill time. So the finding is quite interesting. 
For the patients with hypoperfusion context, that means they have signs of hypoperfusion, their lactase is around 4.8. For the patients with no hypoperfusion context, the lactase is the same. So the lactate might not be a very good um, indicator for hypoperfusion uh, alone. Okay, so in considering the these um, septic patients with hypoperfusion, we may need to sort of other uh, parameters. And also, if you can see that for the patients with hypoperfusion, the requirement of noradrenaline is much higher than those without the, um, the evidence of hypoperfusion. If you look at the, um, the, the use of noradrenaline in the two groups, the one with the uh, hypoperfusion context require higher dose of norepinephrine, and also the number of them requiring the uh, hemofiltration, mortality, uh, mechanical ventilatory days, and also the ICU length of stay is trending higher, okay? So lactate itself might not be adequate. He's just the police, and he's not really how unhappy the people are. So having discussed about the shock or hypoperfusion uh, in causing uh, hyperlactasemia, I just want to point out uh, some other minor things on the new uh, understanding of lactate. One quite important use of lactate every day in the ICU is to uh, detect mesenteric ischemia. Some patients may, might not be fitting well, the abdomen is a little bit distended. If we see an uh, exedemia, or we, we uh, really worry about the mesenteric ischemia, and we will ask the surgeons to look at it, or we book a CT abdomen. So is this uh, lactate measurement really useful in diagnosing an acute mesenteric ischemia. In 2002, there's a review article on this, and the result is quite uh, uh, what was a surprise to me, that based on the current evidence, there's no single serum marker, including serum lactate, which is elevated early and specifically enough in the serum to diagnose acute mesenteric ischemia. So, this is um, still an, in, a difficult problem for us, for the um, silent in, uh, mesentery ischemia in ICU patients who are intubated, sedated, and so on. So take a quick, I'm sorry for the small prints of it, and if you take a look on the review article, in this uh, study in 2006, the sensitivity for uh, mesentery ischemia is only 33%. So it's, it, it's quite useless, I would say, if, only if a 33% of sensitivity. Some other better studies showing 78%, which might not be enough, okay? So if someone come back having a no lactic exitosis, mesenteric ischemia is still a possibility. So another issue I want to uh, talk about is about the uh, drugs and toxin that could cause the elevated lactate. So in the past, there's a classification of type A, type B lactate acidosis. For type B, there are some drugs that could cause a B2 types of lactate acidosis. But with the more detailed understanding of the uh, mechanism of lactate acidosis, roughly we can divide them into a few groups. One group will be the um, drugs that inhibit the mitochondrial function, which include the cyanide, the propofol, linisole, the um, nucleoside, reverse transcriptase inhibitor, and so on and so forth. And another major group that could cause the lactic acidosis is through the adrenergic pathway, namely the beta-2 agonist, epinephrine, theophylline, or cocaine, okay? And there are some other smaller minor group that cause the lactic acidosis um, in another way. So this is, a, maybe we can review or revise how we uh, understand the lactic acidosis in these patients. So the third, the last thing that I want to talk about is the lactic acidosis in critically ill patients. I, some of my um, more junior trainees, they say that when a patient's with septic shock, they come into ICU, check the blood, they found that there's a lactic acidosis, and they think, ah, dialysis will help these patients. And in fact, in 1992, it, the, the paper did say that dialysis may be a useful mode of therapy when severe lactic acidosis exists in conjunction with renal failure. In this setting, continuous hemofiltration used in conjunction with alkaline infusion may be a satisfactory alternative. And 
potentially support therapeutic modalities that could be used to rapidly decrease blood lactate level. So it hints that dialysis would be helpful in curing the lactate acidosis. And I think in our experience, a lot of time these septic patients, after we put in some inotropes, start the dialysis, ventilate them, in a few hours their lactate acidosis start to clear. So dialysis is really useful. But is it the truth? So in 1997, they, they, um, they have a, there's a publications on the um, clearance of lactate, and they measure the total plasma clearance of lactate, and also the filtered lactate clearance, that means from the CLLT. And you will be surprised that the, in the total plasma um, lactate clearance is around one liter per minute, one liter per minute. Yet, you, you don't have one liter per minute of blood going through the dialyzer. How can it clear one liter per minute? And from the dialyzer, the clearance is much lower and only consists of only a few percent okay, of the total lactate clearance. So the patient is improving not because of dialysis, but because of how good support the improvement of the hemodynamics. How about higher volume of clearance? This is a um, publication, I think, one or two years ago from the Mayo Clinic, and they have uh, patients with lymphoma, and with the lymphoma, the metabolism is chaotic, and then the tumor generate huge amount of lactate, and the lactate red level reaches up to 20. So to control this, they tried on the CVVH, or even hemodialysis, high volume hemodialysis, and you find that the level remained quite high, and the only thing that is effective is chemotherapy. By killing off this abnormal cell, the lactate will come down. And in their um, experience, they also measure the lactate clearance. It's only around 79 mils per minute with seven liters per hour of hemofiltration. So using CRLT to clear lactate is not uh, really an efficient method. So to end my presentation, I think I've presented to you the old look of the lactate, and also I've presented you to the new look of the lactate. They are policemen or, or, or disciplinary forces helping uh, the citizen. And hypoperfusion and hypoxia is something that we don't like. And we should get worried when the lactate are at work, okay, they are helping the patients. But it is perfectly fine to have pretty plenty, of uh, plenty pretty uh, lactate standing by around, okay? They are around and things are under control. And at last, I like to, I really hope that if a lactate wearing his uniform, if he is present, then everything is under control. So this ends my presentation. Thank you.